Welcome everyone to the VMworld 2021 and this expert-led workshop on NSX Cloud consistent networking and security across enterprise, AWS, and Azure. Our session's agenda today is we will go over the introduction of hosts of this session, then we will jump into how we constructed the lab uh, lab experience and instructor guided lab. In instructor guided lab, I have few slides uh, about NSX Cloud and their components, uh, the solution and the components that I'd like to go over. And after that, we will jump into the lab exercise itself. We will pick one of the modules of this lab and we'll do the module live. And that time you have two options. You can sit back and relax and watch us do the module and really learn about the product and the features. Or you can do the lab with us. Uh, so we'll try to go slow. Uh, with, with you know our pace, you'll be able to do the lab. Great. Let's start with introductions. My name is Puneet Chavla. I'm a senior technologist here at VMware. And my co-host, my co-presenter, the co-captain of the lab, who, you know, we build this lab together, is Muhammad Haddad. And he is VCN senior engineer here at VMware. Let's jump into construction of the lab. We constructed the lab in three parts, three phases. First one was constructing the V-pod itself. This is uh, where we built our management plane and also compute plane. Uh, the <clears throat> resources uh, for this VPOD live on premises in our data center. And what we have done once we made the, all the management plane and component plane and configured everything, deployed all our SCDC components, we captured that VPOD and we deployed multiple times so each individual labs get their own vpod second we also build our um, compute plane in public cloud in aws and also in azure both of these are identical and the way we built we automated the process is through python bodo3 uh, apis for AWS side of the cloud and in PowerShell for Azure side of the cloud. And these scripts not only provision the lab uh, or the resources that we need for the lab in public cloud, but also deprovisions them and clean it up once uh, you're done with the lab. So the next person will get a fresh copy of all the resources. And third piece is the hands-on lab backend. This really ties up the whole lab experience together. This is where we, when customer registered for the lab, um, the scripts get initiated there. Uh, the timer that you see on the top uh, is happening, you know, in the backend systems the provisioning, deprovisioning, cleanup of all uh, the resources, all those scripts get executed from the back end of it. So hopefully it gives you a better idea how you know we build this lab. Next, let's talk about the experience. So currently you should be able to have access to VMware vWorld 2021 portal for hands-on lab and um, you'll be able to see NSX Cloud Lab there. If you can, just in the top uh, search bar, search for HOL 2227, and you will be able to get to this um, page where you will be able to enroll by clicking that big blue button on the top right. Once you enroll into the lab, um, you'll be able to start the lab itself. And the lab experience 
is, you know, as I mentioned, it's a multi-cloud lab. So we have resources on premises, we have resources on AWS, and we have resources on Azure. Our management plane runs on premises and our compute plane uh, run on AWS and Azure and also on premises because we have one hybrid application. The backend server tie up everything. So in your timers, um, the registration, the deprovisioning, all that happened from the back end. And when you do get the lab registered, you see a main console. And in the main console, we will mostly be using our browser, which is Google Chrome, to conduct most of the exercises of this lab. We will log into our management plane, so vCenter, NSX Manager, uh, CSM, all these are applications or appliances for our management plane. We're going to use browser to get into these applications UI. And also on the AWS management portal or Azure, or Azure portal, we'll be using the browser to get to those. And also for our compute, so we have two applications running and we will be <clears throat> using the browser to get to these applications as well. We do use some putty uh, sessions to check our connectivity between on-premises and public cloud. And that comes usually in, uh, later in module four. But for the most part, we will be using the browser within this main console. Let's quickly talk about these two applications. We have two separate applications deployed. One is healthcare application named OpenMRS. This is a native cloud application running completely on public cloud. It's a two tier app. So we have web and database layer running in EC2 instances in AWS and also a separate uh, instance of the same application running in Azure. Then we have our hybrid application, which is e-commerce application AB cart. And the reason it's hybrid is because it's running both on public cloud and on premises. It's a three tier app. We have our front or a web tier running in public cloud, one instance in AWS, another instance in Azure, but the other two tiers of this application, web, or sorry, app server and database are running on premises. We uh, use NSX VPN to make the connectivity between the clouds and later use NSX security policies to secure our application. So we have divided our lab in four modules. The first module is introduction to public cloud. It's a 15 minute module. This is, uh, you know, shouldn't take more than 15 minutes to go over this module. Users don't have to really uh, do any exercise in this module. It's mostly the verification. So verifying, you know, all the components on public cloud has been deployed properly. And if you're completely new to public cloud, then it gives you uh, a nice tutorial on how to access, uh, for example, AWS UI or Azure portal. And every uh, individual labs have gets a, a unique uh, AWS and Azure account which also means everybody gets their unique credentials to get to these accounts. Module two is introduction to NSX management components. If you are familiar with NSX management, uh, with NSXT, we have NSX manager that runs on premises, but in order to uh, utilize NSX cloud features, uh, we have added couple more components 
um, alongside with NSX Manager. And in this module, we will go over in depth what are these components and uh, how to access them. Module three and module four, where is really the meat of the uh, lab is where you do a lot of exercises in order for to make these applications work. So module three is securing native cloud application from previous slide. If you remember, our native cloud application is healthcare application, open MRS that is running in AWS and Azure. And in module three, we create NSX security groups and NSX security policies to enable the traffic to these uh, this application. And after that, customer or user will be able to get to the application itself. In module four, uh, we secure hybrid cloud application with NSX. And this is, again, our AB card application that's running both in public cloud and on-premises. So in order to do that, uh, in module four, we first do the VPN connectivity using uh, NSX VPN between the clouds. Once we have the connectivity, then we enable the uh, NSX security to make sure that users have access to, uh, for example, port 80 to get to our applications. So that's the flow of the, the complete lab itself. But because due to the time restraint, we will only be focusing on module three, which is a 60 minute module. And, um, you know, we will go over each step of the module three to go ahead and secure and uh, make the uh, native cloud application work. All right, next I will talk a little bit more about the NSX cloud solution itself. This is how the NSX cloud footprint looks like. So we, in the top, we have a management and control plane, and then we have public cloud gateway and the data plane where our virtual machines are running. So let's go from top to bottom. Our management plane is running on-premises and it consists of NSX Manager and Cloud Service Manager. Both of these are appliances that are already pre-deployed for you in the lab. The NSX Manager and Cloud Service Manager have a one-on-one -on -one relationship and from the cloud service manager, we will be deploying the public cloud gateway in VPC and VNet. We also add different uh, public cloud accounts that we would like to manage from via NSX in NSX Cloud Manager. So this is mostly your day zero preparations. And from NSX Manager itself, we will be doing most of the day to work. So uh, securing our applications or uh, creating the network uh, segments, all that happen from NSX Manager. So NSX Manager is a place where we see the complete inventory of our workloads, uh, workloads that are running on premises or natively in public cloud or even services that are running in public cloud, like S3 uh, storage or Lambda functions, uh, you name it. All that is available in a single pane of glass under NSX Manager. Now, uh, we have connectivity between our management planes on premises and in public cloud, and this can happen directly over internet, over Direct Connect, Express Route, or even a site-to-site -site VPN. In our lab, we are using direct internet access. So when we deploy public cloud gateway through Cloud Service Manager, uh, Cloud Service Manager um, makes an API call in uh, AWS and Azure, and the connectivity gets established there. It happens over port 80 and 443. 
from uh, both uh, Cloud Service Manager and NSX Manager to the public cloud gateway. It's a one-way uh, connectivity, so you know our, custom, our customers don't have to poke holes within their firewall in order for these two components to work uh, securely. Once we deploy the public cloud gateway, the within the data plane, you have two options on how to enforce these uh, networking and security policies that you create in NSXT. The first enforcement mode is cloud enforcement mode. This is the mode where our gateway changes the native security groups and policies of the cloud to mimic uh, the policies that you have created in NSX Manager. And the other enforcement mode is NSX enforcement mode. In that enforcement mode, we deploy NSX tool or agent in individual workloads. And that becomes our uh, enforcement place. So from the public cloud side, we open all the traffic. We don't manage anything from native security groups or security policies in the public cloud, but we make the enforcement right at the source in the workload itself. Now, customer can pick and choose which enforcement mode they would like. The boundary of the enforcement mode is within a VPC or a VNet. So if you have multiple VPC or multiple VNet, you can pick and choose uh, which uh, enforcement mode you would like within an account. So if you have 10 VPCs, you could have uh, five uh, picked for cloud enforcement mode and the other five uh, picked for NSX enforcement mode. Features wise, there is not much difference between these two enforcement mode. It really comes down to what suits best in your architecture. Great. So next we will go over our NSX cloud components in little depth. Uh, the first one is NSX cloud service manager. We also call it uh, CSM. And CSM, as I mentioned, de get deploys uh, within management plane and uh, next to your NSX manager. It has, it get tie up with your NSX manager. It has one-on-one -on -one relationship. And in our lab, we have deployed this whole management plane on premises, but you can deploy the NSX manager and the cloud service manager, so our management plane on public cloud also. So you can do that in Azure via a marketplace, or you can do in AWS via AMIs, global AMIs. Cloud service manager onboards the VPC or VNet that you would like to secure with NSX manager. Also, it this is a place which configure default quarantine policy for your VPC and VNet. And you deploy your public cloud gateway through Cloud Service Manager. So Cloud Service Manager is also responsible for the whole life cycle of public cloud gateway and NSX tools, NSX agents. Next, we will talk about public cloud gateway itself. So public cloud gateways are local NSX control plane in public cloud. It gets deployed within uh, VPC or VNet. And the deployment process is completely automated. You just have to uh, you know, provide few information on like which VPC you will uh, like to deploy the public cloud gateway. And you, know, you click the button and everything. Um, NSX Cloud take care uh, deployment uh, happens over uh, automation. And in this lab, in module three, we will go through that process. It's a day zero process, but it's a very easy and fast process. So we'll um, like you to experience that. And that's why um, we will go through it in the lab itself. 
the gateway, uh, you know, enforces the quarantine policy. It also enforces the uh, DFW policies, so your uh, firewall policies to either, uh, depending on which enforcement mode you have picked, either to your native cloud or directly in the agent itself. You can also uh, enable this NS, uh, NSX Edge gateway for node sort traffic, so public cloud gateway for your node sort traffic. And, but by default, this, uh, all the traffic goes over the public cloud underlay. We deploy this application in an HA pair. Uh, they are in active standby mode. There is a heartbeat between both applications, um, EC2 instances. And if for any reason the primary goes down, the standby becomes active and take over control. As I mentioned, uh, the public cloud gateway is available in public AMIs and VHD in Azure. But the deployment process is automated, so you don't, most of the time, you don't have to worry about that. With uh, public cloud gateway, you deploy it in one VPC or VNet, but you can manage multiple VPCs and VNets through one public cloud gateway. All right, next let's talk about NSX tools aka agent. This is again an optional tool that you will need to deploy within workload if you choose to pick the NSX enforcement mode. If you do deploy this tool, uh, you know, this becomes your distributed data path. This is where we enforce distributed firewall policies and all the traffic uh, goes through this NSX tool. So, you know, logical switching writing, routing uh, happens there. And then we can also do NSX overlay on top of public cloud underlay um, through, through this tool. Uh, the tool is great for zero trust security architecture approach because you can embed the tool within AMIs uh, so as your customer deploying the AMIs uh, that you approve of, uh, the tool's already part of it. Or you can also set um, the option to deploy NSX tool automatically in uh, Azure environment. So as the new virtual machine comes in, um, you know, we, uh, the public cloud gateway will deploy the NSX tool for you on those virtual machines. All right, next we will go over the architecture diagram of the application OpenMRS that we used for our module three, which is the scope of our workshop today. Okay, here I have drawn an architectural diagram for our module three application, which is OpenMRS. So we'll start with on-premises. I have a vPod Deploy, deployed on premises. We call it HOL 2227VPOD. And here I have, um, you know, vCenter deployed uh, and NSX Manager and Cloud Service Manager appliances deployed as virtual machines. All of these appliances uh, are deployed on management subnet, which I created within this vPod. And we also have within management subnet, uh, NSX Edge deployed with this IP of uh, 10.114.221.33. Uh, and we also get our internet connectivity um, to this vPod. And on the other side, on the public cloud side, I have two public clouds. So on the vPod, we only care about the management plane for module three. And um, our compute is on public cloud. So let's start with AWS. I have uh, resources dedicated in AWS, uh, US West one region. 
And there, what we have done is we have deployed two VPCs. We named them Transit VPC and Compute VPC. Within Transit VPC, um, we have deployed our public cloud gateway. The deployment of public cloud gateway happens from Cloud Service Manager. And this is one of the exercises in the module three that you will be performing. You will be deploying uh, the public cloud gateway from CSM and see how easy and how fully automated the process is. Um, during the deployment process, our uh, automation also creates multiple subnets within these uh, this transit VPC. And one of the subnets called NSX Management Subnet. Here is the IP range for it. And this is where the management or, or public cloud gateway get deployed. What we have also done with the automation is when we deploy this compute uh, or transit and compute VPCs, we have also did a VPC peering between them. This is already uh, done within the lab. The other process which has already been done is the deployment of the virtual machine itself. These are the compute virtual machine, our application open MRS. So it's a two-tier app. We have deployed the open MRS Web 01 AWS VM or EC2 instance. So these are EC2. And both of them, uh, so one is web and one is da database, they are both deployed on uh, NSX compute subnet. And uh, we have the users coming in, going directly to the open MRS web uh, interface. And all the networking you see is done here is completely um, AWS overlay. So we are not using any NSX networking um, for, for this application. The only um, feature we're using from NSX side is the uh, security piece of it. So we create a distributed firewall uh, and creates the rules in NSX manager to do things like open port 80 so users can go to, so this is on port 80, so user can connect to the website directly. So these rules we create an NSX manager, NSX manager pushes the rule to NSX public cloud gateway and public cloud gateway enforce those rules by creating different security groups. So AWS security groups to open port 80, for example. So this, is, this will be the exercise that we will be doing in module three. Now we have exact same replica of this architecture created in Azure. So let's go over it quickly. Um, via internet, we use Azure overlay networking. Uh, we don't use NSX networking for module three. And in here, we deploy NSX public cloud gateway. Again, the deployment process happens from cloud service manager. Everything is automated. And then later on, the life cycle of this uh, public cloud gateway, like updating it, and uh, making sure everything is running, all that happens from Cloud Service Manager also, right? So when uh, the automation takes care of creating all the subnets, uh, we have already created Transit VNet and Compute VNet in public, uh, in Azure uh, West US region. And within the Compute VNet, we have deployed two virtual machine, Open MRS Web 01, and uh, the database service for that application. And again, you know, user goes directly 
uh, to the public IP that has been provided and access the OpenMRS web um, UI. Uh, but the one of the cool things about NSX is when we do create this uh, open port 80 rule, uh, firewall rule in our NSX manager, we just created once, right, for our open MRS application. And regardless if the application running in multiple places uh, and on public cloud, NSX uh, realize those security policies in both AWS and, and Azure. So this is what we have for module three. And next we will go jump into um, the, the lab itself, the exercises itself, and we will start from module three and we'll finish that module uh, in this session today. Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed Haddad. I am a lead uh, VCN solution engineer. Uh, today I have with me Puneet, who is gonna be uh, leading this workshop in the beginning, but I'm gonna show you the uh, lab for module number three. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen right now. And before I jump into the lab, I'd like just to show you the topology for the hybrid app, because what we're gonna do in num module number three is we have a, an application that's living in the cloud natively. That application has a web MDB living in AWS and all has the same instances running in Azure. So we have two clouds here to manage. Now the beauty of NSS cloud is you can have multiple clouds, multiple accounts, all of them managed from a single pane of glass, which is NSX manager. So NSX manager and CSM are gonna be the ones that are gonna enable, enable us to do the policy. And when we do the policy with matching criteria for two clouds, and when we do this, then we have only one policy for the cloud. So even if you move the VMs or change IP address, we don't really have to worry about that as long as they keep the same tags and they match the criteria. Now, to be able to do this, what we do is you deploy a VPN, oh, sorry, it's a PCG, it's a public cloud gateway. It's the same NSX edge that you deploy on-prem, but we deploy it in the cloud. That's why we call it PCG. And then we deploy one in a transit uh, VNet in AWS, another one in transit VNet in Azure. And then we link the compute sub, uh, VNet to the uh, VP, uh, PCG. Why we do this linking is because we don't want to really deploy a PCG per VNet. We can do this, by the way, but it takes resources as well. So it's going to be a cost in, uh, on the, in the customer. So what we try to do is we deploy a PCG in one of the VNets, and then we link other VNets to control the policy in these VNets. So in, as you can see here in the Azure Transit, we deployed a PCG, but in the compute trend, uh, VNet or VPC, we did not de deploy any uh, PCG, and we're not going to use any tools or NSX tools or any agents on the uh, uh, native uh, application. So with this way, we're gonna do an API call, and that API call will actually push the policy to the uh, uh, native uh, applications. That's the topology. We don't really need a VPN. We don't need anything for this to work. All we need is HTTPS outbound from NSX Manager and CSM to the PCG, because PCG will be the one pushing the policies as well to the, uh, to the uh, native uh, application living in the cloud. Now, let me go to the lab. Once you subscribe to the lab or enroll, when you open the browser, the first thing you're gonna get is this login page. So what you do is you log in, you log in with your own email that you registered for this lab. And the password is very simple. It's actually VM capital where, uh, number one and then exclamation mark. That's the standard uh, password that we use for these type of labs. Now, once you log in, you see that you have the information for you to log into the AWS information to log into Azure. You see the public VApp IP address, which is actually to build the VPN for module number four. So it's like your on-prem public IP address for the firewall to do VPN side to side. You see the URL for the hybrid app, the native app, and also you see the uh, login for Azure. And for Azure deployment of the gateway, we have something called the public key that we need to, uh, to use for the deployment. Now, the first thing we're gonna do for this lab is we go to module number three on the right side. Okay, well, the first thing we have to do is actually to deploy the uh, public cloud gateway. Now, before we go further, two things I would like to note. It's better to make sure that you have the lab is, the status is ready. So we make sure that the lab, because you have some scripts running in the background, if it shows you timed out or there's some error, don't continue the lab, just end the lab and launch a new instance. 
And another tip is to go uh, to Zoom 90 because that will show you full screen of the lab. So you don't have to scroll up and down when you're going through the lab. So that's the first thing we they will ask you here in this, we'll ask you for this in this lab is to go and log into the CSM. So that's the first thing. So now I'm gonna go and log into the CSM. I'm gonna open a new tab. I'm gonna log into CSM. I'm gonna go proceed. The username is admin. The password is loaded here, as you can see. You can just select the password and then drag and drop the password. So we don't have to type it multiple times or we don't have to do any mistakes. And once I log in, I go to light mode because I like the bright uh, GUI. Now, if you go to the clouds, what you're gonna see is AWS. They have, we have already added the AWS account for you. It's a live account in Azure as well. We have added an account. These accounts are live, they are dedicated for your lab. And every time you end the lab, we free these accounts to other labs. So the first thing we do is we need to deploy the PCG. So the first thing we go AWS, we're gonna go VPCs. And then we're gonna see two VPCs mainly, the transit VPC and the compute VPC. These are where they want to deploy the PCG on the transit. And then we link the compute to the transit VPC. I'm gonna quickly deploy the VCGs. Usually it take around uh, 10, 10 to 17, 18 minutes, depending on the cloud. And then we can actually start doing all the policies. So the PERM file is called management. We're gonna manage with NSX tools. This is only if you're gonna do module four, to be honest with you, we're gonna use manage with NSX tools. But if you're not gonna do module four, you don't really need manage with NSX tools. But I'm gonna move with the lab uh, sequence. For the connectivity to the gateway, we're gonna use auto detect. So we actually can do connection with CG to the private IP address or the public IP address. But for this lab, we're gonna keep it auto connect and we don't have any proxy server. Now, if you go to the uh, next tab, gonna, we can actually deploy the PCG in, in HA mode. But for this lab, we're gonna remove the HA mode. We're gonna deploy it only single instance. So if you go to availability zone, you can see A and C, usually it's B or A. We're gonna select A. And then we're gonna see all the segments of where we need to connect the PCG. So every PCG have three links. One is uplink to connect as a VPN or get IP address. And the other one is actually for management. And the down link is actually to connect to the DNet itself. So the uplink is called uplink subnet. The downlink is the download segment and the management is the management segment. Now for the public IP address, we're gonna use a public IP address for managing the PCG. So we're gonna select and locate a new IP address. And also for VPN in the module number four, we need a public IP address for the PCG to establish a VPN connection. That's why we select also allocate a new IP address. If you were not gonna do a VPN and you're gonna use your own Palo Alto, Fortinet and so on, you don't really need to allocate any public IP address on the uplink. You just allocate, you allocate it on the management. And even on the management, if you have a private VPN already done, you can don't need a public IP address on the management. But for this lab, because we have it in the public cloud, we are allocating the management and the uplink uh, public IP address. We're gonna use NSX to do the VPN in module number four, not number three. So I'm gonna click deploy for the AWS. As you can see, started deployment. You can close this tab and go to the Azure site and start the deployment again for the, for the PCG. So you don't have to really wait for the uh, deployment to be fine to, to finish and then go to Azure. You can directly go to Azure. I'm gonna say deploy public cloud gateway. As I told you before, there's this SSH key that you need to copy from the hands-on app manual. So I'm gonna select the SSH key, make sure that you select all the parts of the SSH. You cannot control C, control D, just right click copy. We're gonna go here and paste it. We're gonna say manage with NSX tools. We're gonna say auto install NSX tools because in Azure we can auto install NSX tools, but for this lab, for this module C, you don't really need these two. But if you're gonna continue for module four, you need to have these enabled beforehand. Again, we're gonna use a marketplace image. We now we have our Azure uh, image for PCG in the Azure marketplace. So you don't have to copy it from any account. And then we do the same thing. We're not gonna select HA mode. And as I saw, told you before, the uplink is the uplink segment. The PCG will have three links. Downlink is for the downlink segment and the management is for the management. And because we need a public IP address, we're gonna allocate and allocate IP address for the public IP address for managing the PCG and another public IP address to, to do the VPN. And then we click deploy. So as you can see here, it's also gonna start the deployment. 
it's going to take another 15, 20 minutes. But in order to move forward, I'm going to close these. You can see, I can see this status showing that it's being deployed. If I go to AWS, you see the same thing that they, it's being deployed. We leave this page for now. We're going to continue the lab and come back and see how we link the, uh, link the compute DNAT to the transit DNAT. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an inventory review. So if you go here to the table of contents, after you deploy the gateways, you need to actually link them, but we're going to skip this till we have them up, up and running. Now let's verify the VMs in the Azure and AWS. So we're going to look into Azure and AWS and see the VMs and their tag. So let's go to Azure, the AWS first. I'm going to open this in a new tab. It's going to ask you for username, password. It actually noted over here, just try to click copy and not click paste. This is the password, copy. That's the username. And this is the password, let me confirm. Okay, let's log in. We're following up the, 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 the um. so what you can do is you can go to services ec2 and when you go to see ec2 instances we see all the vms that we have running in the cloud you go instances what you'll see here we see all these vms running in the cloud we can move this down for better visibility so what happens here if you look here we have open our s web it has an ip address and it's sitting in the vnet which is actually the VNet for the compute, okay? And has also a public IP address. If we go to the, AD, uh, the open SDB, it's the same in the same VNet as well, it has an IP address. And you can see here the public cloud gateway being deployed. So right now it's running, but it's not yet fully deployed. So right now I'm gonna select the web. When you select the web VM, you can see all the properties of this VM. You can see the tags. As you can see, this VM is being tagged right now with the name and app here is web and, and the app name is OpenMRS. So what you're going to see in the NSX, we're going to try to match these tags. And if they match, then what's going to happen is that OpenMRS web will be automatically added to the web group. So in the future, if you're adding more web servers, all you have to do is make sure that they are tagged with the web and OpenMRS and automatically they will be added to the policy. That's one of the main benefits of NSX Cloud. It's like the same policy being dynamic, and that same policy is matching not only the web servers in the AWS, but it's matching also the web servers inside as well. So it's going to be a single pane of glass, a single place, and a single policy to match the VMs in the cloud in AWS and as well. If we go to the DB side as well, it also have a tag. And as you can see, it's actually called app tier db and the app name is open mrs and that's yeah, these are the tags we're going to use to actually match them in nsx from a security perspective if you look at the security policy we have already a security saying that inbound and outbound is actually inbound is nothing is allowed as you can see in the inbound rules and in the outbound rules you can see there's only allowed any any so in this case only to the nsx uh, within the dnet itself so in this case, if you try to access that application, it should time out because we don't have any policy, any rule to allow communication from outside. Okay, so let me try the application from a, a Amazon. So I'm going to click on the open MRS web. What you're going to see is the page will open, but it's going to be timing out because there's no policy that allows the communication from outside to the web server. There's no policy that allows the web to talk to the DB at all. So that's why the, you see that the application will time out. Okay. Until this time out, I'm going to log into Azure site. You're going to see the same, probably similar output where the VMs are tagged with certain uh, tags. That's the username. We're going to copy the username from here. Click paste. We're going to go to the password, copy the password. Okay. 
As you can see, AWS already turned out. So it's telling you that we could not connect to the web server. So we have something called Mini Proxy, which is our proxy server, trying to connect to that web server and feeding an error, it's timing out. Now let's go to Azure side. Go to the virtual. If you get any confirmation with address or marketing or anything, you just click close. You go to the virtual machines. You'll see the same virtual machines like OpenMRSDB and web another instance living in Azure natively. You can click on any of them. Okay. You can go to network tags first. Let's let confirm the tags. You can see it have an app name called OpenMRS and have also the web as an app tier. So the same tags are being available in Azure and in AWS for the web. And it's the same thing as well for the application living, a DB application living in Azure. So it's tagged with app tier DB and the app name is OpenMRS. Now, if I go to the uh, security of that virtual machine, so if I could click on this one, networking and see the security. You'll see that it has a VNIC, and that VNIC is having these rules. And you can see that the rules are allowing only communication within the VNet itself and to Azure Load Balancer to talk to them, but everything else is denied. So there's no rule inbound to allow communication from outside. Outbound is similar. We have no rules in outbound. It just it's deny any any at the beginning from the internet. So there's no communication allowed from outside. Okay, it's allowing only from virtually within the VNet. If you go to the web server, we we'll see similar rules that it doesn't have any rule allowing incoming web to the web server. And we don't see any outbound rules to be allowed to communicate with the internet. So as you can see here, we don't have a rule to allow communication. Now we can go and click on the link. And if we click on the link for the open MRS, you see it's timing out as well. Okay. This will time out. Let's us check the CSM and see what's the status for the VPCs. Still, it's being deployed. We can continue our lab and look at NSX Manager. If you look into the NSX Manager, look at admin. The password is VMware one bank and then VMware one exclusion mark twice. If you go to networking, what you see, because these PCG will be deployed, you will see a new, how first of all, you see new edges being deployed. So if you go to system, fabric, nodes, you see new edges being deployed in the public cloud, the same NSXT edge, but you'll see them being deployed in the public cloud. That's the first thing. You see public cloud gateway for AWS and for, and for AWS and for Azure. These are two of the public gateways that are being deployed. VPC, it means it's AWS, and if it doesn't have VPC, then it's for the Azure side. As you can see, the public cloud gateway for AWS is now up, and for Azure, it's not yet up, it's being deployed. If I go to networking, you see new T0s created. Once the PCG is up and running, you see now we have the PCG for AWS up and running, so you see a new T0. Once we can link the VPC for the compute to the to the uh, transit, you see a new T1 created. These are not really mentioned in the lab, but I'm just giving you here as well. You can see the T1 being created for the BBC of the transit. We see another T1 created when you connect the compute as well. So the point here is it's exactly the same networking and look and feel when you go to uh, Azure or AWS. It's uh, the NSX manager being deploying the public cloud gateway, and then we create T0 and T T1s based on the compute VPCs and VNets. Now in the inventory, what we have done to make sure that it, you, you get this done quickly, we have actually created the groups that we need for OpenMRS. So if you look to go to the OpenMRS right now, you can filter here, open. You see there are three groups. In the first group, we actually put all the members, all the VMs of the, of the uh, OpenMRS. So if I go edit criteria, you see that the criteria is actually based on two things. It's based on the tags, yes, but it's matching all the all the VMs that have open MRS in their app name. Okay, so that's what we're matching. So if it's even in Azure, 
all AWS were actually matching the name of that VM. So you can see the, this is discovered Azure app that name and discovered AWS app that name. If they match, they will be added to the uh, to the policy to the group. So in this group, we should see four VMs, all the VMs for web and app in both uh, in both AWS and Azure. If you go into the DB, it's a bit different. We're matching only the DB server. So we actually go edit, check the criteria. You see that we're matching that the VM has DB tag and open MRS tag. So if it's a DB and app in AWS, I want to put it in this cloud. And if it's also a DB and app in Azure, I want to put it in this group. So now in this criteria, we're matching only DB servers. Let me click cancel. And same for the web. If you click on the edit and check the criteria, you see that also we're matching the web and, and open MRS. So we're matching if it's web and open MRS, then we're going to put it in this group. And we're matching web and open MRS, then we put it in this group. We're matching multiple clouds with the same tag. So this group should only contain the web servers and should not contain the DB servers. Okay. Now, if you click on the view members, you should see no members because we did not link any, any uh, the compute VNet where the native VMs live to the uh, transit. So once we link them, you'll see the membership automatically populated. So all the groups are empty right now. So that's why you see them empty because we don't have any link between the compute and the transit PPC. So right now let's go to CSM. It should be, everything should be up and running. Let me go first all to AWS. You can see the gateway is being is deployed already and it's up and running. What we need to do is need to link the compute DPC to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, transit DPC. Let me go here. I'm going to go actions. I'm going to get link to transit DPC. So I'm going to close transit DPC. You see this transit DPC, which will have the gateway deployed. Because it's a native app, we're not going to install an agent. I'm not going to select NSX tools. OK, so let's click Next. This will take around a minute to complete. Once it's complete, you'll see that the inventory inside the compute VPC will be now populated to NSX. NSX will try to see if they match any criteria for the policies or the grouping, and then you'll see them in the group. Let's go to AWS, uh, Azure, sorry, and let's see the status. OK, now the gateway is deployed. We're going to go to the compute VNet. We're going to deploy link to transit DPC, sorry. Transit VNet. We're going to select the transit VNet where we deployed the gateway. We're not going to select NSX tools. Next. And now it's being linking the compute to the transit VNet. Again, once this is done, all the inventory, all the VMs, all their tags will be populated in NSX, will be le learned by NSX. And then we can do grouping based on these criteria. As you've seen, the criteria are there. The grouping is done for you. You can create your own criteria and grouping. But the point here is multiple clouds, multiple VMs, we're matching them in a criteria in a single policy, single group. And that group is dynamic. That's the key thing. It's dynamic. If they decommission any web server, automatically you will be removed from the web server group. You don't have to clean up. You don't have to go and manage your policies every time the system admin build up or break down certain VMs in the, in the cloud. We'll keep this running, so it's done. So now we're done with, NSA, with the CSM, actually. We have the accounts added. We have the gateways deployed. We have the instances now being populated. You can see the gateway, the OpenMRS DB, the OpenMRS web, the uh, native card, native AD card application. But we, we're really focusing on DB and web for management. Same for AWS. We see all the instances as well. And you can see the uh, information mark because they are not yet managed by any policy. So you see explanation mark is saying no NSX policy is configured for these VMs. So now let's try and see the NSX here. Let's go to view members. You can see automatically now we're populating the membership for these criteria. Because this application have two VMs, this criteria have all the open MRS uh, VMs to be matched. If you go back to the criteria, we we'll see that. So what you see here in the criteria, it's matching based on the being tagged as OpenMRS, and all the VMs are being tagged as OpenMRS. Now we see the AWS side, but soon enough, you'll see as well the Azure side. So let me refresh. Okay. 
Let me filter again on open MRS. Let's go to members. Now we see the Azure and AWS. So as you can see, it takes like 30 seconds to populate these in the inventory, and now we have them match. If you go to the DB, we should see all the DB servers, AWS and Azure. Let me view members. We see the AWS and Azure are running here. And if you click on the web, we see also the web servers only matching here. So now we can actually create a policy. If we go to security, distributed firewall. We don't have a policy for the open MRS. We have only a policy for the AD card. So if the default trial, the default tool is saying I'll deny everything else. So it means if there's no policy matching before, we're gonna drop all the traffic. And that's why nothing will work right now. So we have to create a policy. We're gonna create a new policy. We're gonna call it open MRS policy. Okay. And then we click on the three dots. We click add rule. The first policy we need is to allow web traffic coming from the internet to the web server. And it has to be only HTTP. So I'm gonna call it internet to web servers. So the source will be any, the destination. I wanna select only the web servers. So I'm gonna, I can say web. Open MRS web. Okay. And then I'm gonna select the server to use HTTP, which means I'm allowing HTTP traffic coming from outside. Now we have the first rules allowing internet to come from outside to the OpenMRS web server on HTTP. If we try to access it with this rule only, we're not able to reach the DB. So now we need an, a rule to allow the web server to talk to the DB on MySQL. So I'm gonna add another rule. I'm gonna call it web to DB. Okay. One thing I'd like to note here is we did not select to where to apply this rule. It's better to select to open MRS. So that's why we have a group called open MRS. We don't want this policy to be deployed everywhere. We need to deploy it only where the VMs are living. So we're gonna select open MRS group. Okay. Now we're gonna go back to this rule, say web to DB, we're gonna select the web servers. So I can drag and drop by the way, because this is really easy. So in this session, I'm gonna select and open MRS as a source and open MRS as a DB as a destination. So here I'm gonna say open. I'm gonna select the DB as a group, not the web. Okay. And I'm also gonna select the service as MySQL because that's the protocol we need for this communication. Apply. Now we're gonna also select the same group to be applied only to, and all we have to do now is click publish, okay? Before I click publish, let me show you the, again, the security inside here. You can see OpenMRS web security, there's nothing, okay? There's nothing for the outbound, there's nothing for the inbound. Same for the Azure side, if you go to the Azure side, you can see there's no, as I showed you before, that it's still the same policy. Okay, but what's gonna happen when I click publish, an API call will be done to the Azure uh, API servers, and then that policy will be populated here automatically. So now let's go and click publish on NSX. Okay, now what's gonna happen is, now we're gonna see that this policy being actually pushed to the PCGs inside the cloud. As you can see, this is the public cloud. Gateway, that's for Azure, because uh, sorry, AWS plus a VPC, and that's for Azure. Because they are matching both, and they have the VM that match the criteria, we're pushing it to these two edges or PCGs in the cloud. Now the policy is pushed. Now if we go to the instance here, let me just refresh. I'm gonna click on the web, security. Let me bring this up a little bit. You see soon a new rule allow, allow, being allowed here. So you can see right now there's only PCP 22 20, SSH, but soon enough you'll see as well other rules being populated. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong uh, VM, it should be web. We open our S. Let's go to security. 
And as you can see on the web server, now we have port 80 being allowed from anywhere. That's inbound. Outbound, we allow from web server to talk to only the DB server on MySQL 3306 and use a security group for, it, for the grouping here. If you go to the DB, you see we allowing communication as well for, we should be allowing communication for MySQL. Okay, so you can see inbound rule with allowing MySQL to be allowed from this segment, which is the open MRS web server segment and using security group. If you go to Azure, let me go to the Azure side, just refresh here. You see similar rules that being allowed for allowing port 3306 and allowing port 80 from outside. And you can see we're putting the rule ID here. So that's matching the rule IDs inside NSX. And then we're using a network security group to group this in, in, in the Azure side. If you go to the DB, we'll see similar policies to allow communication on this DB on 3306. So in short, what you're seeing here right now, instead of you going creating these rules on your own or doing API calls and taking so much time, and if you have multiple accounts and multiple uh, uh, clouds, it becomes more and more operationally prohibitive. What we're trying to do with NSX is having everything running from a single pane of glass. So now if you go to the application, to the URLs that we're not opening, let me, let me close it and then we open it from the manual. If you go to AD card, let's click on the open MRS hub. You see it's gonna open and let's go to the AWS site and click on it and it should be open. So as you can see right now here, we already logged in. We can log into the open MRS. Same for the Azure AWS side, it's opening. Now, just a small note, we have a problem with the open MRS running in Azure in AWS. So even if it doesn't open, but it gives you this information, this, this page, this means that you reach the web server. So there shouldn't be a problem, but it should be opening like this in the Azure side. So the point here is now we can actually log into the open MRS uh, application. As per the manual, there is username and password. You can check it and you can log in. But the point here is we were able to create a policy from a single pane of glass for the two accounts, for the two Azure clouds. And as you can see how simple it is to manage it. It's not like you're going to learn a new technology or new terminologies. Because, you know, in, in AWS and Azure, they have different technologies. For example, the DRS is, or the segment is called VPC in Azure, VNet in, in, uh, sorry, VPC in AWS and VNet in Azure. They call, in AWS, there's something called security groups. In Azure, there's something called network security groups. So it's a bit of really a, a lot of uh, yeah, long, lots of things to learn when you go to the cloud. We're offloading this for you and we're giving it to you in the NSX cloud or the NSX, which is actually the, the, that can manage the on-prem and the off-prem uh, uh, policies in the cloud. So that's the purpose of module three without opening any VPN, without anything. But if you want to take it a step further, you can use VPN from NSX. You can do VGP with NSX to advertise all the VNets connected. And that would help you as well in type of management and having connectivity to the public cloud. So I hope you enjoyed this lab. i sorry, I did not follow the manual because, because of the Deployment of PCG takes time, so I wanted to skip over and then come back to the PCG. But I think the point here is very clear on how we manage the policies in multiple clouds from a single pane of glass. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy this lab. You can do this lab at any time. The modules are not dependent on each other. You can start module three alone or module four alone. In module four, we have also deployment of PCG. But if you have deployed it in, deployed module, deployed it in module three, you don't have to redeploy it in module number four. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.